So let's start working on planning B process group. The first template that we run into is 8.0 quality metrics log. And it's important that we find the um, quality standards that are relevant to this project. And um, quality is really planned at a very detailed level. So let's go down and look at our WBS item, the same one about this recruiting plan. We need um, to put together a plan for recruiting and in the scope and time and um, other areas we figured out how many people that would take and um, how much time it would take and how long the duration would be in those activities but here we're really talking about how do we make sure that we're successful that the recruiting plan that we actually get is a good recruiting plan so um, and that's what quality is all about making sure that it isn't just mumbled together but that we have a plan before we start to make sure it comes out perfectly so in this case I think the metric might be that we want the plan to be complete 100% complete and we want it to compare favorably to other recruitment plans that's still not really measurable, but it's a lot more measurable than um, we want to start recruiting people or something less. Um, so let's see what we can do. The way that we, what would we need to do in order to measure this? Well, the first thing we'd have to do is figure out what 100% complete means. So for that, it would be nice if our organization had some standard outline that they use for recruiting plans. And if they do, that's somewhere in the um, organizational process assets that every time someone is putting together a new class for a new different type of, um, of student, they don't have to start from scratch. They can look at the standard outline that we use for recruiting plans. So that's an organizational process asset. And when you're doing quality, when you're doing these templates, it's a good idea just to say, magically, what if what would we need to do this well and find it? Here's another thing that we're going to need. We have to compare it to other recruitment plans. So we probably have to go back into the project records for a couple recent projects and get two comparison recruitment plans so that someone can compare those two. And the other thing is, depends on who is signing this off. It might be the, um, there's a student services administration person, and that might be um, the person who's actually doing it, but it might be the executive director of student services who's actually going to be signing it off. And so um, we would need to schedule a review with that executive director. Now, if you think about it, these are brand new things that came up as a result, and they were never in the initial planning that we did. So we're going to need to go back up to um, planning. And we're actually going to, when we put in our um, individual activities for the recruitment plan, sorry, um, we're going to have to look and see, is that going to change anything with the um, the activity list and resource attributes that we needed before. Well, before we said to develop this recruitment plan, we would need about three days, and it would take about 10 hours of work, um, and there would be five people involved. And we said that would be planning and marketing and student services. And it seems to me like we need also an executive director here so that we can um, get that exec director to um, sign off. 
and then um, there aren't any particular supplies we need except maybe printing but that could be in-house so if we have to get the executive director involved it's possible that assuming that we can go from start to finish in three days is really unrealistic in terms of duration so maybe that we make that a week let's call that um, five days so we're going back and revising our plan to get that in and actually that's a sixth person for example that we've got involved and um, the hours of effort might have just gone up to um, 11. so that's a change from what we had before let's see what else that impacts we also had um, planned cost and so before we had 10 people and now we have 11 at $40 an hour 11 hours let me just make that okay there so our effort now is 11 hours it was 10 hours so now I'm up to 11 hours of effort which is $440 um, for the total labor so you can see that for this particular part um, I have now added cost because adding quality almost always increases the cost but it decreases the mistakes and the errors and the rework and everything down the road and the flat-out failures from not having planned correctly so that's it for planning quality let's go on to the next um, element which is the racy chart for human resources I'm going to stick with um, the whole recruit and register students which is um, at the second level of the um, of the work breakdown structure and usually when I do a racy I want to stay pretty high level and the question with a racy is who is actually responsible for driving the completion of this particular um, element and in this case I made I think the project manager who's in column B I'm just going to show you how these all connect um, and here was that student services administrator and here's that executive director and you can if you don't like listing the column names over here you can put them right over here that's fine whatever works for you um, I think it's easier if you see if you see them right in the columns so um, so what I've done here is said okay in this case I think the person who's accountable for making sure that it's all done and the person who can really go out and throw a fuss if this isn't done right that would be the executive director they have the final sign off on whether or not this is done correctly the student services um, director is responsible for driving it to completion and the project manager can also be responsible for driving it to completion then we've got um, perhaps the um, account manager might be consulted on how recruitment plans have gone in the past and the sponsor would probably be just kept informed on how well they're doing um, and how this is going certainly the sponsor doesn't need to be involved in day-to-day -day on that I'm going to skip communications plan because it's very similar to what you did in the stakeholder um, planning and initiating and you can just copy it on down and then I'm going to look at risks the first part of risks that we're going to be dealing with in this course is identifying risks and so just to keep this 
um, normal, I'm not going to just go off and say, what could go wrong with this project? I'm going to look at the specific element that I've been working on and, um, and work with that. So in terms of um, 2.1.1, um, in the work breakdown structure, if key personnel are absent, developing the recruiting plan could be delayed, which would cause schedule delays for downstream tasks like actually doing the recruiting. And I might, um, we don't use risk categories much in this class, but I might say, well, that's a personnel issue. Because you see, if I come up um, when I'm planning and I look and I see that there are 12 risks that are personnel issues and only two risks that are technology issues, for example, I really know where to focus my time. So that's what risk categories are for, but it's hard to use them in this class. The next item that we have is procurement management. And I'd like to talk about that in this case, um, let's say that we have we outsource our web development and we need to um, procure some um, some email blasts out to selected um, potential students and our email blast um, contractors are external to the organization so I'll probably use a time and materials contract and um, and in terms of selection, I might um, use the um, vendor that we already have a contract with. And um, assumptions and constraints. I, I guess my assumptions would be that um, our vendor already has all of the um, security access to the emails that they need and to our website. And um, in terms of constraints, that um, this is uh, limited to um, a small email last that we don't want them going out to billions of people because we only have 15 spots in our class. So if I go ahead and add that to my log of things to be procured, I'm going to have the email um, blast and I don't uh, the statement of work that I need to sign with the vendor to do that. I might need that by um, May 1st. And the type of contract might be time and materials. And the potential vendors, I'm only going to have the one, which is um, emails are us. And the estimated cost, time and materials, it's um, $1.50 per hour. So the potential vendor was emails are us. And um, estimated cost is $50 an hour, estimated that we need two hours, and we're going to buy it rather than try to do that internally. So that's it for the um, B planning elements. Let me know if you have questions, and I hope this was helpful.